Hello, I'm Nyoko, and welcome to year 16 of Galaxy Clan. The Galaxy Clan playlist is linked below or in a card above if this is your first video or if you need a refresher. And this year was interesting. On one hand, there was a lot of fun new faces, and on the other hand, we rolled a mass extinction inside the game, and the results made me send a message to my boyfriend that just said screaming crying with a screenshot. And apparently he was getting a haircut at the time and he only saw me send screaming crying on his watch. So oops. Anyway, I illustrated that event, so I have an animatic for later, but keep in mind that it will take place about halfway through the year. So I'll save it for when we get to that part in Star Clan. But for now, we start with the pain. Dark Whistle was actually the first casualty of the year. He died one moon into the year at 93 moons old, and the way that he died broke my heart. Blood warning for a picture going up in 3, 2, 1. He and Lizard Snap were caught in a surprise Viper Clan ambush at the border, and he used his own body to shield his younger sister from the attack. And the picture is gone now. Dark Whistle and both of his litter mates all died saving their little sisters. Both of Eagle Strike and Sage Dust, they died in the fire looking for Hope Kit instead. And on the same moon that Dark Whistle died, Viper Clan actually stole some of Galaxy Clan's territory. And then the war ended the next moon, so we definitely lost this war. Also, it feels targeted that Dark Whistle specifically was the one who died when he was the one who swiped a Viper Clan cat in defense, back when he was escaping a bad negotiation. I'm so sad that Dark Whistle died. I loved him, but we really gotta move on. Here's a new face. This is Caramel, and he was only in the clan for literally one moon because he was a whopping 242 moons at death. He was fierce, apparently a good hunter, and a good kit sitter. And he was saved on patrol from being thrown into a lake by Pansy Bloom, Wormshade, and Orange Paw. While he was only in camp for a moon, I'm sure that he was appreciative of being saved from his previous fate and getting the chance to pass away peacefully in a nest instead. I was debating even drawing him, but anyone who actually joins the clan in-game shall get art. So here's Caramel. Loved his name and wish he was younger so I could have got to know him better. Moving on, next to die was sadly Condor Breeze who died at 37 moons old, and I'm so sad. One of them dies before they can get together, I swear. Condor Breeze never asked out Truffle Sprout, but they both had a really high romantic like for each other before he died, and I am not okay. Small blood warning for a picture. Condor Breeze died when he saved a kit from a snake, specifically a kit that we'll talk about later, and the pick is gone now. And in general, the fact that Condor Breeze died for a kit when Truffle Sprout has so many interactions with kits in general, it, it hurts me. I wish that they could have got together and potentially had kits of their own one day. It seems like something they would have been interested in. Rest in peace, Condor Breeze. At least he got to see his apprentice get his warrior name. But moving on... Sadly, Flaxroar died this year. Come on, game, she just got back. You couldn't have been nice to her for at least a year. She died at 91 moons old, and she was killed by rogues, which hurts extra because that's exactly how her sister Lycan Splash died. I did make art of this event, but I'll wait until I get to the last cat that died to this to show to avoid some spoilers because rogues killed three cats in one moon. I'm so sad that Flaxroar died and her brother Holostar didn't take it well, but we'll get to that later. Sadly, we have a lot more cats to get to. Another rogue casualty was the newly named Orange Sun, and I swear Orange is a cursed prefix. The two that we had both died young. She died at only 17 moons old and was a cunning, eloquent speaker who was somewhat clairvoyant. She became a warrior at 14 moons old and was honored for her hard work. She was also on the patrol that saved Caramel, as I mentioned, and looking at her history tab, apparently Pansy Bloom taught her to be more likely to avoid violence, but also to be better at arguing and behaving erratically. Orange Paw also pranked her grandpa Thunder Spirit, which I thought was cute. But yeah, rest in peace. But now we're taking a detour. Because Hope Fern is in the dark forest and she died at 63 moons old. So in game, exiled cats don't really have an explanation for when they die, but the moon before, she heard rumors of rogues and then on the next moon she died mysteriously, along with the two cats that I just mentioned were killed by rogues. Which fits with me saying that Holostar was having two cats at a time guarding her cave. And blood warning in 3, 2, 1. So rogues definitely ended up killing Hope Fern and the two cats that were guarding her being Flaxroar and Orange Sun. There is more to this event, but we'll get to that later. And the picture is off the screen. Since being sent to the Dark Forest, Hope Fern has yowled her woes into the darkness, but also she had the status of having no regrets. So you know, in the end, she killed Lightning Flight, so Dark Forest she goes. Now, as for detour number two, major blood warning, it's animatic time. There also might be some new faces in this. 
But with that said, let's start. During the night, Micah Kit had snuck out from the nursery, seeing how far he could explore before he was caught. He smelled a stench and a shadow fell over him. He screeched in horror and the sound quickly woke up the cats in the clan. Realizing his scent, Holosar called the rest awake. As badgers came to her attack, there was screams from disoriented sleepy cats. Everything was so fast and with one swipe a badger could take a life. They made their way to the nursery where Wormshade and Sleek Clove tried to defend the kits. Dreamkit cried in despair when his dad took a deadly blow. The medicine cats weren't faring much better, Snake Eyes swiping at a badger trying to keep it back as Flame Bear tried and failed to stop Beetle Bites bleeding, even with Snake Eye and Thunder Spirit pushing back the badgers. Gold Dazzle tried not to be distracted as she weed for the badgers and dead clan mates, trying to get to her dad, but she wailed upon seeing that it was too late and badgers had made it to the elder's den. Meanwhile, Cloud Jay faced off against a large badger with his mate bleeding behind him. He tried to fight, but the badger got a deadly bite on him. Guppy Paw leaped in anger at the badger for what it did to his mentor, clawing at the beast. The clan was slowly turning the tide, and the ferocity of the cats managed to chase out the badgers. Holostar winced in pain and the stench of blood that was around the camp. This was not a win, and he felt Frecklespot's words of a rule of bloodshed echo through his mind. So yeah, badgers attacked our camp, and I tried to show or hint at everyone who died in the order that it appeared in-game. But with that said, the first death was a new face, Micah Kit. He was free moons old and a sweet little boy who liked to splash in puddles. In game, his mom was a rogue who left her litter with the clan and Wormshade adopted them, but since I don't have the unmated cats having kit setting turned on, I was actually waiting to see if one of these events would happen so I could find a loophole and say that these were the biological kits of someone who broke a code. That being said, Wormshade has kits now and the mom was a rogue who is concerning Considering what just happened, Micah Kit's mom was named Shine, and while I didn't draw her, she'll be coming up again later. That being said, I'm so sad. Micah Kit is adorable. Rest in peace, little shooting star. Next to Die of the Badgers was Jump Spark, and if you didn't notice, he was the bloody paw frame. He was 32 moons old at death, and I thought it would be really sad if he had died near Micah Kit, and the clan found the two of them after the fight. I'm really sad that we lost our mute Torty King. Overall, he was doing really good this year, but nothing in particular stood out, if that makes sense. He seemed happier at least, but it hurts to lose this boy. Snake Eye is now the last living Hope Branch kit. Side note, at some point Fuzzy Flake had asked him if he was a good teacher, and he got the prompt where the conversation died awkwardly when Jump Spark didn't answer, which is extra funny to me since even though he's mute, he does know sign language, so I just imagine him just awkwardly looking away and Fuzzy got playfully offended. Again, sad to lose Jump Spark, but we have to move on. Next to Die of the Badgers was Sleek Clove, who died at 53 moons old, and I'm so sad. He was my boy fail in the most positive interpretation of that. He was so silly. And he and Flame Bear had one single kit with the help of the surrogate, as I mentioned last year. One little boy that they spoiled. Sleek Clove kept trying to set a good example for younger cats this year, and I assume it was for his son. And I mean, he was like challenging clanmates to a two-on-one sparring matches, trying to show off. And I feel like the clan humored him and let him look cool for his son. I'm so sad that he didn't live to see his son become an apprentice at least, but Sleek Clove always had his most standout hero moments when others were in trouble, and I fully believe he died defending the nursery. But speaking of defending, next to die was Beetle Bite, and I can definitely see him as running to be the first to fight in the Medicine Cat Den, probably trying to defend Snake Eye and Flame Bear until he was hit too hard. I imagine he was also worried about his kits in the Apprentice Den at the time too. Beetlebite actually received a very concerning omen earlier in the year. He saw a piece of fresh prey that was somehow already rotting inside, and he sat on an isolated mountain ledge just thinking about it. Both him and his mom, Swanleaf, get strange omens, I swear. I do actually already have an answer to what this was, and we'll get to it later. But I'm so sad that Beetlebite died. Stonefawn lost one of her mates now, and he didn't even get to see his kids gain their full names. But next up in Star Clan is Pansy Bloom. And I didn't draw anything big for death, mostly because time. But I can also see her trying to leave the camp when the attack was happening and getting caught by a badger. She did seem a bit better this year, with that said. She was on the patrol that brought Caramel to camp, and she was working on fighting techniques with Hilfas. With Snow maybe trying to get her back on track training and being productive in the clan. But sadly, badgers got her. There's not really too much to say about Pansy Bloom. And next up is Meringue, who died at 144 moons old, and I always hate it when elders die in a gruesome way, 
Just let them pass peacefully, I swear. At least let it be like sickness or something so they don't suffer as bad as this. Not that sickness is any better, but you know what I mean. Gold Dazzle had tried to make it to the Elder's Den, but sadly she was too late to save her dad. He was mostly just vibing and giving advice to cats this year. One cat being Echo Kit, which was cute to me. I don't know, I always love when kits hang out with the Elders, but sadly on that note, the Badgers killed both of the Elders we had at the time because... Fernhart did indeed retire when she was 119 moons old, but she was killed shortly after at only 121 moons old. She didn't even really get to enjoy retirement that long. I am screaming. But even though she died really quickly, Fernhart is actually the first cat to be born into the clan and make it to retirement. Galaxy Clan cats, please stop dying young. Before she retired, she seemed to be spending a lot more time inside the camp and was helping the medicine cats a bit. She actually retired the same moon that Hopefern was killed, so that obviously took a toll on her. As an elder, she was sharing her wisdom, and I just hope that Fernhart can finally rest now in Star Clan with everyone she's lost. All her family, Bright Star, everyone, just, just go be happy. But we must move on. Ragged was killed too, and he died at 119 moons old, probably close to his own retirement. And he didn't do anything suspicious, so the verdict is that Ragged is just a good guy who had simply tried to negotiate with Serpent Star to not start a war, but he failed. He genuinely seemed like a good guy, and both him and Cloud J had apprentices they often took out together. And Ragged was on a patrol where he helped Cloud J's apprentice identify raspberries, using his Viper Clan knowledge of which plants are deadly to assure that it wasn't death berries. Overall, he was chill and sadly didn't get to finish training his apprentice. I wonder if he was planning on retiring after that or if he was planning to stay a warrior until Cloud J retired, who knows. But speaking of, Cloud J died right after Ragged on the mass extinction list and that broke my heart because that meant they were fighting and probably died together. Cloud J died at 102 moons old and he and Fernhart were the last of the Cuddlebugs kits. And that pains me to say goodbye to them. Cloud J was doing amazing as the deputy and organized a bunch of mock battles, keeping the clan sharp in case of Viper Clan attacks. But I really think he was taken aback seeing that the threat they had to face was Badgers instead. And he was the last cat to actually die from the Badgers. He didn't get to see his apprentice become a warrior when he was so close. I never expected to get a Cloud Star, but I was hoping Cloud J would stick around until he retired at least. But now that he's in Star Clan, I'm sure he's introduced Ragged to Otter Tail. But yeah, Cloud J was the last to die of the Badgers, but we still have one more death and we gotta take a detour for it. So Osprey Claw gained her warrior name and also did bad enough things to be sent to the Dark Forest at only 19 moons old. She was actually killed by a Wolverine on the same moon that everyone was killed by Badgers. And not so fun fact, if you saw the two polls on my community post where I gave you no context on what you guys were voting for, uh, one of those was voting on if Osprey Claw was going to the Dark Forest or Star Clan. And if she did the things I'm about to get into, and you guys voted on, yes, she did do the things, and she's going to the Dark Forest. So first off, she's bloodthirsty and got the Dreamwalker trait. That's a surprise tool that will explain stuff later. And by later, I mean in like a second. She became a warrior on the first moon and was fighting with a clanmate. She also complimented Moss Clan's battle prowess in the border and had thoughts of murdering cats she didn't like quite a few times, despite her young age. She's been walking in Hope Fern's dreams, taunting her and acting like it's nightmares. And she even managed to walk in the dreams of nearby rogues who have no connection to Star Clan or anything. The rogues eventually discovered that they all had the same dreams of a cat that was telling them to go kill a tortie who lived trapped in a cave, or bad things would happen to them. So Osprey Claw sent the rogues that she manipulated to Hope Fern, but was upset when the guards were killed too, including her own sister. She's young and didn't really think through that the rogues would probably just go for everyone there. While she regrets that, she did still do a lot of bad things and has been sent to the Dark Forest for now. I'll be keeping an eye on her to see if she seems better or to see if she's doing more dreamwalking in general. Side note, the Living Clan members know nothing about this and have no idea she went to the Dark Forest. But she was what the fresh prey that was already rotten omened that Beetle Bite had was about. So young and yet already rotten inside. Basically saying that a cat so young was already rotten inside. I don't know, maybe she'll redeem herself one day. But that was the last death of the year, and in total, 16 cats died, I think? And none of that was me making a generator myself? But yeah, let's finally just go on to our living cats. Starting with Hollowstar, who somehow still has all eight lives that he had for like the past two years. Starting with Hollowstar, who somehow still has eight lives and didn't lose any this year. He's 98 moons old now, and he's had a tough year with some mistakes on his end. 
first he had dreams from Star Clan right before the war was over, and I believe that they told him it was time to accept the loss and to appease Viper Clan by giving them some territory. A decision that Holostar obviously didn't want to because he immediately had thoughts of driving out an opposing clan, but I think he was just angry. Flaxor's death also hit him really hard and he was furious at the rogues, which leads to another thing you guys blindly voted on. So in game, Shine dropped off her and Wormshade's kits, but was dead. So on one of the polls you guys blindly voted on, the options were basically keeping her dead of unknown causes, Hollow Star straight up killing her, or coding her in as alive, but lost to see if she joined the clan later. And well, you guys blindly voted on Hollow Star murdering her to be the winner. So blood warning in 3, 2, 1. Holosar picked up a scent similar to Flax Roar and killed the rogue Shine, noticing her kits afterwards. And the picture is gone now. This decision was inspired because he did chase out a rogue this moon, but Holosar felt both bad about killing a mother and also angry at Wormshade. He didn't blame the kits though. After the badger attack, he made a solemn vow to protect his clanmates. Side note, Holosar lost part of his tail to the badger attack. I rolled two random cats that would get scars out of the survivors, and of course fate gave him another scar. I swear this wasn't rigged. And Holosar actually ran into a pack of wolves rounding a kill in a distant valley, which reminded him of his dad's fate, and he turned tail to leave quickly. Beyond the murder going on, Hilfuz asked Holosar to be Snow's mate early in the year, and Holosar said yes. The two seem to be happy together, and Holosar actually has kits in the nursery right now. And he loves them, and they may be little spoiled clan princesses right now. So at least there's a bit of happiness with the yikes that we're up to this year, but oh boy. Holostar makes it really hard for me to figure out where he's going to end up going. Puddles, for the crime of unplugging my microphone, you are now being forced to serve the rest of my recording time in jail. I'm going to go bring you to my mom's room now. I hope you think about your mistakes. Sir? <laughs> Anyway, let's check out the unexpected cat chosen to be deputy. The 54 moon old truffle sprout actually has the position, and I'm kind of wondering if this is nepotism since he's Holostar's nephew, and also Holostar mentored him in general. Either way, unexpected, but I'm down for this choice. He seems nervous about the power and duties though. Also, Truffle Sprout has hung out with so many kits and young cats this year, but in a way that I kind of feel like they're bullying him. Um, Ghost Kit nipped him, Echo Kit was in a yowl off with him, and Guppy Paw pranked him. He was also really upset when Condor Breeze died and went on a patrol with Snake Eye, who he's close to afterwards, where Truffle Sprout was wondering about what legacy he would leave behind, and Snake Eye reassured him, saying that he'll be a legend worth remembering. Truffle Sprout and Snake Eye are actually pretty good friends, and I think that's cute. He had also asked Snake Eye what it's like to be a medicine cat, so there's that. Also, Truffle Sprout got an apprentice this year, which is how he became eligible for deputy in the first place. And together, they actually warned J-Clan of a badger scent on their territory, wanting to avoid a tragedy for them like they had just had. But yeah, unexpected deputy, and I hope that the pressure doesn't get to him too bad. Into the medicine cat, then. I'm drawing Snake Eye first, purely so that she can be next to her friend in the lineup. Snake Eye is now 37 moons old, and she came out as a trans girl this year, and I like to think that she asked Truffle Sprout about this stuff first since he's trans too, and he was really supportive of her. Truffle Sprout helped her with coming out, and Snake Eye helped him with Condor Breeze's death and general self-worth feelings he was having this year. Beyond that, Snake Eye's had a kind of rocky year. Her mom was basically in jail and then got murdered. Beetle Bite died during the badger attack, and she put her good fighter skill to use chasing out the badgers, but then she found out about how Jump Spark died too. The next moon, she went to do her daily check of the elders, but we didn't have any more elders. So I think it was something that she did out of habit before getting sad when she remembered they were gone. Her and Flame Bear found a dead queen with her kits and ended up bringing the kits to the clan, so you'll meet those guys later. Just know that there's free kittens in the nursery. But speaking of Flame Bear, he is now 59 moons old and he's been a bit more numb this year compared to last year after everything that happened. When his son was born, he actually slept in the middle of the camp clearing because I feel like he was struggling with wanting to be in the medicine cat den and wanting to be in the nursery. Then Condor Breeze died due to a snake bite and he freaked out over the snake existing again. On the same moon that the half rogue kits were brought to camp, he was staring off into space and then discussed a vision on the patrol. And then after the badger attack, he was dazed with the loss of Sleek Clove and he's tried to be close to his son, but I don't think he's doing that good of a job. I think Flame Bear is still hurting with the loss of Sleek Clove. 
And I did notice that his sister, Lightning Flight, was looking down at him from Star Clan and had the saddest that she wished she could tell him how proud she was. And that hurt my heart. I also noticed that Flame Bear has free bars of both like and dislike towards Snake Eye, so he seems to still have conflicted feelings about her. I hope that the like rises and the dislike goes down, but we'll have to see. I hope he gets better, but he seems to be having a rough time right now. Again, he seems more dazed this year than stressed and freaking out, if that makes sense. But our mediator died early in the year, but another cat actually did step into the role, so we do still have one. Thunder Spirit is now 98 moons old, and he decided to be a mediator a couple moons after Dark Whistle died. And honestly, he seems to be doing pretty good in this role. He seems to, in general, be a clan therapist, such as when he checks in on cats, like when he wondered how Gold Dazzle was doing after Meringue's death, which I took to interpret as he went to go comfort her with the loss. He also gave advice to an apprentice on the same moon that they were playing Moss Ball instead of working, so he seems to really be attentive to how the clan is doing so far. While he was still a warrior, he had the status that he was really sad but tried not to let it show, and I think that's his go-to in general. Of course, he's sad losing his family members, but he's trying to be there and be a more positive role for those that are still here. And side note, on the moon that he was sad, he later had a practice session with Kale that was ended nicely. And it seems like Thunder Spirit no longer is upset at him, and he does have a slither of a crush back on him. It's small, so who knows if it will go anywhere after this, but... I'm glad to see there doesn't seem to be much dislike at the moment. But speaking of Kale, now that we're starting with the Warriors, Kale is now 99 moons old, and he seems to be a source of positive energy most of the time in the clan. Looking back at his practice session with Thunder Spirit, he seems to like him more this year as a guy in general. But the romantic like hasn't really grown much. So either way, I wonder if Kale is starting to think that he just wants to be friends with Thunder Spirit at least. I'm down for friendship or relationship, whatever they end up being. But I do like their dynamic so far. Beyond that, Kale was the first to send and report rogues this year, and we know what happened with rogues later. And later in the year, Kale was on patrol with two cats that had experienced a loss during the badger attack, and they all got caught in a winter storm. He kept everyone's spirits up despite everyone being shaky and scared, and he did a really good job keeping morale up. Overall, I kind of love him and he's a cool guy. Concerningly, he also has a pretty high dislike for Flame Bear, but Flame Bear is a bit messy at times, so hopefully it's nothing too bad or serious. Next up is a new face. Meet Oopsie Daisy. She's 68 moons old, ambitious, and a good swimmer. And I love her name. It's perfect. Just Oopsie Daisy. Love it. She actually joined the clan on a time skip, and I've decided that she was related to Caramel in some way. I roll loner traits for people to have, and they actually both rolled to have, like, the mustache hair, so I think it's fitting to say they were related. She seems to be sweet and is trying to fit in. She helped a lost Moss Clan apprentice get home, but she also missed Prey a lot, which I imagine she went oopsie-daisy when she did it. Okay, maybe not exactly, but that's just, that's just what I feel in my heart, okay? <laughs> I think she just needs some extra training, and she'll be a great warrior in no time. I also thought that it was funny because she had the status of trying to emulate Holosar's body language when she talked to younger cats, which I just think is really cute. She's looking up to the leader, and she's like, wow, everyone respects him. Maybe I should be more like him. Then I'll fit in more. She's just trying to fit in in general, and I just love her. Please, please, Clan Gen, be nice to her. But next up is Branch Dare, who is 64 moons old now, and he's had it rough. For some cute stuff, first he theatrically died after Ghost Kit slayed him, which was adorable. But immediately moving on, Hope Fern was then killed and he couldn't help feeling bad despite everything that happened. He then had the status of wanting to hear stories the same moon that Fernhart was sharing wisdom, so I think they were both talking about Hope Fern at the time. Then Jump Spark died during the badger attack and I think he shut down a bit. A lot of cats seem to be closing in on themselves a bit this year. He's supportive of his daughter Snake Eye and is trying to be there for his last living kit. Overall, he didn't really do too much and he seems to be in his head a lot this year. If he was less mentally drained, I could have seen Holostar picking him for deputy, but I'm kind of happy he didn't because Branch Deer really needs the rest right now. And next up is the 54 Moon Old Wormshade and Sir? Okay, first he was on the patrol that rescued Caramel, but then he apparently went missing for a few days. And once he came back, he was counting everyone to make sure no one was missing. Bit of a hypocrite there. Um, I think he had a fling with Shine who he fell fast for and didn't realize until she was expecting just how bad she and her group of rogues were. I think they had a falling out either right before or after the raid on Hope Fern's prison. And he never actually met his kids. That is until Hollowstar brought the two moon old kids back to camp and other cats pointed out 
to Hollistar that one of them was basically Wormshade's clone. He admitted they were his and did his best to love them and in the absence of their mother, which Wormshade felt uneasy with the fact that she was killed by Hollowstar, but he bit his tongue and didn't want to make a scene. Wormshade feels really guilty for Micah Kit sneaking away that night and not being able to protect him from the Badgers. Hollowstar also has a dislike for Wormshade now, and I think he feels bad in general for seemingly screwing up his life. Wormshade just feels like he's a mess up now, I think. He actually showed deputy goals after his brother became deputy, and I think it's more in a sad way of, I'm never gonna end up being that, am I? You know? Wormshade did get his one living son as an apprentice, though, so there's that. But yeah, Wormshade's been living with regrets right now. He's not doing the best. Next up, we have Stonefawn and Lizard Snap, who are now 50 moons old, and the polycule is sadly no longer with the death of Beetlebite. But at least we still have these two. So first, Lizard Snap saw her big brother Dark Whistle die protecting her, which messed with her head. And she wasn't thinking while out on patrol, where she actually got kidnapped by two legs. She was taken really early in the year and was lost for 10 moons. So she missed the deaths of pretty much everyone and was taken aback when she managed to escape and find her way back home. That being said, Lizard Snap has been spayed and will not be able to biologically carry kits, so if these two adopt in-game, Stone Fawn is going to be the biological mom. That being said, I was kind of getting the vibes that Lizard Snap just wouldn't want to carry kits in general. Also, Lizard Snap got a collar during a time skip in the two moons I play ahead each year, and I just rewrote canon slightly to say that she came back wearing it because I thought that made more sense. That being said, the collar actually looks pretty good on her. Now, as for Stone Fawn, this poor girl lost Lizard Snap to two legs and then her other mate died to badgers. She was one of the cats trapped in the Storm of Kale, and then after that she had felt a sense of protection for her clan, ready to defend them. She also recalled a story to help through the tough times. It seems like she had a really big bump in the road with everything that happened, but then she kind of pulled herself up and tried to be there for everyone else. She also loudly cheered for all of her kids during their warrior ceremonies, especially the two that became warriors before Lizard Snap came home. I feel like she was trying to make up for the fact that they lost two parents. Lizard Snap feels bad for missing two of their kids' warrior ceremonies, but she's happy she made it back in time for at least one of them. Overall, our girls are going through some loss, but they're staying strong, and I'm happy that Lizard Snap came back. I would have been really sad if she was still lost. I was also rooting for a Lizard Snap deputy, but she was lost at the time, so you know. Another cat I was rooting to be deputy is the 50 moon old Yarrow Patch, and I was really hoping for it, but unfortunately at the time of needing a new one, she hadn't had an apprentice yet. She does currently have one though, so maybe someday. That being said, she had the status of being determined to protect her loved ones, and Losing her dad and Ragged, who had really fallen into a fatherly role as well, really shook her up. She actually just barely didn't get hit by a monster right after that, so she was obviously distracted, kind of seeing parallels with her in Lizard Snap. That being said, she pulled herself back together, and on the last moon of the year, she wanted to be alone, which means that I sent her out on a solo patrol. On that patrol, she was actually ambushed by a group of rogues who were apparently still hanging around, and she was stunned for a moment be- almost getting caught in the teeth of one of them before she ran and used her superior knowledge of the rocky terrain to dodge and weave through the onslaught of attacks. She managed to escape the fray and made it back to camp, yowling warnings that the rogues were still around, and I'm so proud of her for making it out of there. Thank you for not dying. I could not handle another rogue death. But moving on to her brother, Stag Chaser, he's mostly been busy with an apprentice that he trained up this year. He actually ended up needing a bit more time than expected, but that was okay. Ignoring the obvious sadness of his dad dying, he's mostly been doing pretty good still. No attacking eagles this year, but he did take on a few foxes. I also noticed that he has platonic love for spring insert full name later and hilfas, which is an unexpected combination, but it's interesting to see who he's close to. On a scarier note, Frecklespot was looking at him with malice this year, so who knows why, but hopefully that's not something really bad. We'll have to see, but moving on. Next up is a new face. Meet, meet the 26 moon old Frost Lichen, who is strict and a great mediator. He joined at only 20 moons old and used to be a kitty pet, but he got lost and by the time he made it home, his two legs were gone. He also joined with an already burned belly scar, so I'm wondering if his old home caught fire and that's how he ended up lost, or if maybe he was a rescue cat in general and he had been burned when his two legs got him. Either way, interesting backstory. Also interesting that he has a burn scar while his name is Frost Lichen. Anyway, he joined the moon before the badger attack, so that was probably not a good introduction to the clan. 
might have made him rethink some choices. He's also tripped and sprained his paw twice this year and missed prey a couple times. So I think he's having some trouble with the territory. He also snapped at some apprentices for a small prank, and I'm wondering if he's dealing with some internal things right now. Perhaps the abandonment of the two legs in general. He honestly doesn't seem to be the happiest, but I hope he fits in more next year. But yeah, he's cool. Next is the 26 moon old Gold Dazzle, who I swear needs a break so badly. First, I gave her Meringue's bow. It felt like something she would keep, and I had seen some people mentioning that it would be cute if she ended up he- keeping his bow if he passed before her. Don't think about the fact that he's still wearing it in Star Clan. And before he passed, she actually survived a vicious eagle attack and got scarred, but now the bow partially covers that. She lost her dad and her former mentor, Sleek Clove, in one event, and she was feeling ill afterwards. And she honestly hasn't had many shameless statuses, despite that being her personality. I think the most I've seen her do is grooming herself in the middle of the camp. But on a happy note in general, she actually has a mutual crush on Fuzzy Flake now, which is really cute. And speaking of, here is the now 24 moon old Fuzzy Flake, who lost two siblings this year, but has been trying to stay positive and doesn't seem to be letting that get him too down. As mentioned earlier, he got annoyed when Jumpspark didn't comment on whether he'd be a good teacher, and related to that, Fuzzy Flake actually took over the training of Ragged's Apprentice, and he likes to think that he did well. He's mostly been going with the flow, and he did have a very small crush on Gold Dazzle last year, but I didn't really comment on it specifically because it was really small, so I just had him looking at her cutely. But now it's a bigger crush, and they both like each other, so I'm rooting for them in the future. I think they're cute. But moving on to his brother, who now has his warrior name, Spring Haze was honored for his insight, and I also added hair on him last year thinking that he did have it. But oh well, we keep that now. He gained Bang's privileges. Now he looks more like his dad, Purklefleck, and speaking of that, he actually followed Moss Clan's scent to a cat in a tree, who yelled a warning, but a dog managed to get a bite on him before he could climb the tree. So now he has a mangled tail, and that so reminds me of his dad. Hopefully he doesn't follow in his dad's footsteps that closely and doesn't get too more scarred up. He does not need more dog injuries. Um, interesting, he also had the thought that he's meant for something greater, and I wonder what he means by that. But next up is the newly named Guppy Shade, who is now 17 moons old, calm, and a fish-like swimmer, which I love with his name. He was apprenticed to Cloud J, and they practiced hunting techniques on their first patrol out. Ragged tagged along for a few patrols, and Guppy Paw was the one that Ragged told about the red bush being raspberries. Guppy Paw did have some more mischievous moments with pranking Truffle Sprout at one point, but his mentor died in the badger attack, and Guppy Paw was the other cat to roll a scar from the event. And I ended up giving him a long one similar to what Cloud J had. Guppy Shade was made a warrior immediately after the badger attack, and while he should have been happy, he looked towards the crowd wishing that Cloud J was there. And then he wanted to spend time alone. Also, I think he might have been named after Cloud J in a roundabout way because clouds make shade. I don't know, that ju- might just be me reading into it too much, but I think it's cute. And Guppy Shade was the other cat to get caught in the storm of Kale, who he ended up getting comforted by. Hoping that this little guy has a better time next year. Moving on to the Polycule kits. Next up is the newly named 13 moon old Echo Lily. She's adventurous and a lore master. And as a kit, she challenged Truffle Sprout to a yell off. She was apprenticed to Ragged and caught a squirrel on her first patrol even after it tried to escape. She's always been full of energy and was excited learning how to jump up l- rocky cliffs. She was sad when the badger attack happened and Beetle Bite and Ragged died, but she seems to be the least, at least on the surface, upset by it. She bounced back fast and finished up her training with Fuzzy Flake, gaining her name on time, and it being commented during her ceremony that her spunk will lead her through anything, which I just thought was cute. She was also super excited that Lizard Snap came back and is happy to have her other mom back home now. But as for her brothers, the newly named Cavern Bounce actually became grumpy now and he's clever as well as a masterful storyteller. He was still nervous when he became an apprentice, and Truffle Sprout encouraged him to not be so nervous. But blood warning in 3-2-1. On his first patrol, Cavern Paw actually got attacked by an eagle, and Truffle Sprout had to go save him. And the picture's gone. I'm pretty sure that the main contributor to why Cavern Paw ended up grumpy is the fact that his dad died and Lizard Snap was missing for a good chunk of the year. I think he's become less worried that things might happen and more convinced that Things are just gonna happen and there's nothing we can really do about it. He seems a bit more pessimistic right now. Hoping things get better for him, but at least he got his warrior name on time. The same can't really be said for his brother. Because Ghost Snow got his name one moon after the rest of his siblings. And side note, 
I accidentally still had Dark Kit written last year, but he was supposed to be Ghost Kit. He's faithful, a good storyteller, and has a connection to Starkland. I was a bit concerned with this guy as a kit for many reasons. First, Frecklespot watched him with Malice, which she seems to be doing a lot this year, which was horrifying considering he's a baby. Then Ghost Kit nipped Truffle Sprout, and then he teased Snip Cloud all day long, which I actually found kind of funny. He was lonesome when he was apprenticed to Stag Chaser, and together they practiced fighting techniques like weaving around an opponent. Ghost Paw had a strange dream after Beetle Bite's death, and later ended up finding a dead cat on the Thunderpath. I'm sure that wasn't traumatic. He was honored for his observance at his warrior ceremony, and then later was scarred by an eagle. At this point, I'm half hoping that Echo Lily gets scarred by an eagle too, mostly because it would be kind of really funny if all three of them matched. I'm not saying to go fight eagles, Echo Lily, I'm just saying it would be funny. But yeah, I find the bully to faithful change really interesting, and it really reminds me of his dad, Beetle Bite. Also, if I remember correctly, his mentor Stag Chaser's trait used to be faithful too, so I feel like he had a big hand in helping Ghostpaw get through his feelings after the death of his dad. That being said, I really love this litter, but onto some new faces. Meet our last warrior, the 13 moon old Cherry Twist, who is compassionate, a good fighter, and a good climber. He was abandoned at the clan when he was only four moons old, and his mom said that she couldn't care for him. He was a sweet kitten, and he also happens to have the permanent condition of chronic migraines. When he was five moons old, he snuck out of camp trying to get moss for bedding to be helpful, and that's when Condor Breeze saved him from a snake and ended up dying. Hillfuzz was cross with Cherry Kit when that happened, and then Cherry Paw was really nervous when his mentor was said to be Hillfuzz later. Cherry Paw was wondering if this was the right path for him, and then broke down on patrol feeling like a failure. It was then there that Hillfuzz's caring side came out, and Fuzz encouraged Cherry Paw that he's perfect as he is and there's nothing wrong with him. Hillfuzz trained Cherry Paw at his own pace, letting him have rest days if he had a bad migraine. Cherry Paw also encouraged Echo Paw to take a rest before she became burnt out, and in general, he just seems like a really sweet cat. Holosar unofficially took over trading him when Hillfuzz had their kits, and Cherry Twist was honored for his altruism. I look forward to Cherry Twist in the future. He had a tough start, but he's doing really good right now. Now on to the apprentice then. Starting with the 10 moon old Dream Paw, who is charismatic, constantly climbing, and has an active imagination. And I've been waiting for the love bug white pattern to show up one day. I love him. I've been waiting for either this one to show up or the one where they just have one heart on their like side. But he's the one kit that Flame Baron Sleek Clove had. He was a daring kit, and he snuck outside of camp, managing to catch an insect, which he decided to keep its wings for a trophy. He also snuck into Hollow Star's nest and was mastering battle moves that he was performing incorrectly. Adorable. Sadly, Sleek Clove died the moon before Dream Paw was made an apprentice, and Flame Bear seems to be a bit distant with his son. But Dream Paw's mentor is Yarrow Patch, and on their first patrol, they had an awkward encounter on the Viper Clan border. Dream Paw was also one of the apprentices that was playing Moss Ball instead of working, but according to the prompt, he was not the one that initiated it. Also, it looks like Dream Paw is really good friends of Echo Lily, which I find cute. She's probably encouraging him to work so hard so he can finally go join her in the Warriors' Den. But on to our last apprentice. Meet the eight moon old Rush Paw, who's childish and a Moss Ball hunter. He's the little Wormshade twin that immediately made everyone know that him and Micah Kit were his kits. And Rushpaw had a traumatic, eventful early life, and you can kind of tell with the way he's acting out a bit. So when he and his brother were brought to the clan, I don't think they fully registered that Holostar just straight up killed their mom. They were excited to meet their dad, but then the Badgers attacked and Micah Kit died. And by then, I think Rushkit was scared and confused, and he was an attention-seeking kit. He yowled loudly in the middle of the camp clearing. He also said hi to Stag Chaser ten times before it was said back and tried to sneak out of camp, but ended up falling and getting bruised. Poor little guy is really struggling right now. Please give him attention. He found some feathers to wear, and side note, in-game, they're floating right now because he has a bobtail, and I find that really funny. But by the time he was made an apprentice, Rushpaw had a lot of trauma that he needed help with. On his first day out with his father, who ended up being his mentor, Rushpaw talked about his scary dreams, and his dad comforted him. And Rushpaw was the other apprentice that Thunder Spirit talked to, who was playing Moss Ball instead of working. As time has gone on, it seems like Rushpaw now knows that Holostar killed his mom, which shows with the fact that he has a dislike towards the leader. 
But yeah, that's our apprentices, and we don't really have any elders anymore, so into the nursery we go. The 107 moon old hill fuzz is here, with Snow and Hollow Star's two moon old daughters. With rhyming names, that was really funny when I saw it. <laughs> we have the troublesome Night Kit, who's interested in clan history, and the attention-seeking Flight Kit, who is also interested in clan history, but with an added interest in splashing in puddles. And this is actually our first all-girl litter in the clan that wasn't just a single kitten. Don't know how we went 16 years without one, but here we are. As for Hill Fuzz, we mostly went over how Snow's been through throughout the video. Fuzz became Hollow Star's mate, mentored Cherry Twist, and has kits now. Fuzz was also giving advice to another kit who you'll see in a bit and theatrically died after Flight Kit slayed Fuzz. Hill Fuzz seems pretty happy right now, and it looks like Snow and Hollow Star's relationship is going well despite everything. I did notice that Hill Fuzz doesn't like Flame Bear, <laughs> so I think Hill Fuzz realized that Flame Bear has an out for Snow. <laughs> Might not be the most trusting of Fuzz. But yeah, I'm looking forward to these clan princesses and seeing what kind of cats they grow into. Hollow Star seems to have a soft spot for kits in general. But last in the nursery, we have these free two moon old kits. They are the guys that the medicine cats found after their mom Pinkie Pie died giving birth to them. And I saw Pinkie Pie and I ran with making them have curls that look like the character. Poofy little babies. These guys honestly haven't done much and are just vibing in the nursery, but we have one girl. Small Kit, who's an attention seeker with a picky nest builder trait, as well as her two brothers, Blue Kit, who's troublesome and quick-witted, a combination that's perfect for mischief, I wonder what he'll get up to, and Oriole Kit, who's impulsive and oddly insightful, and he's the one that Hill Fuzz gave advice to. Speaking of, these guys joined as newborns and are the exact same age as Hill Fuzz and Hollow Stars Kit, so realistically, they probably would have just adopted them into the litter, but I really don't want to make all this potential new blood in the clan immediately get adopted into the odd family. So they're not adopted and we're not going to think about how that's kind of messed up. Just pretend it's not. <laughs> These are clan community kits with no ties to any related bloodlines. But yeah, I love these curly babies, but we need to talk about someone that was missing that you probably have noticed. <laughs> Snip Cloud is 50 moons old, and he actually went and joined Viper Clan. If you watch the Viper Clan stream, you'll know this, but basically I coded Snip Cloud into Viper Clan as Lost to use that and see if he would join the clan, and he did. Snip Cloud joined Viper Clan the same moon that his kits became apprentices, and he personally mentored Frecklepaw. But Frecklespot is not happy with Snip Cloud since she looked at him with malice, which she has been doing a lot. She wanted him in Galaxy Clan and is not happy that he moved. She thinks that he's soft for leaving to be with his new family and Snip Cloud finally stood up to her a bit declaring that he's doing this and she can't stop him. Which she told him that they're done, which hurt him a bit, but he's trying to be there for his family. Keyword is trying. Snip Cloud then looked at his daughter Frecklepaw, who he was at first excited to name after Frecklespot, but now he has conflicted feelings. It's not her fault, but Snip Cloud actually has dislike for his daughter now, as well as not being the most positive relationship with the first litter in general. Snip Cloud does seem to be fitting into Viper Clan, but he has had concerning moments like having Frecklepaw go fight a dog. He joined Viper Clan before the badger attack and feels guilty for his mother's passing, asking Serpent Star if he could honor her with one of his kid's warrior names. And Freckleheart was the result. Oh yeah, Snip Cloud got a mangled tail when rescuing the leader's son from a fox. So that probably helped Serpent Star like him more. And lastly, Snip Cloud and Sil Valley actually had a second litter of kits already. And I'm not going into specific details of everyone, so if you're interested, I recommend checking out the Viper Clan streams. I'll keep Snip Cloud specifically in the videos, but stream watchers will probably have a good idea of whatever he's been up to. Not required, but you know. But yeah, that's everyone, so let's go see if the other clans had any positions of power swap. All the leaders are still the same, Holostar is still here, and in Moss Clan, Frosty Star has been struggling with his clan a bit. Moss Clan suffered from a fire in camp, so that was really concerning. Tiny Star of J Clan is still around and kicking at 155 moons old. J Clan kinda had it rough this year, and only one kit was born. Also, Galaxy Clan seems to barely interact with J Clan, honestly. <laughs> Serpent Star of Viper Clan is down to 8 lives now after fighting a rogue, and he's quite smug after he got territory, won the war, and essentially stole a warrior from Galaxy Clan. His mate is also currently expecting a litter. Deputy-wise, we now have Truffle Sprout in Galaxy Clan, and Moss Clan has the compassionate Thunder Iris after a small strike retired and then immediately died in the fire. Interestingly, despite the position, Frosty Star does not like him. 
Also, Thunder Iris was the son of Elmshade, who was the medicine cat. Blue Blossom's still around in J-Clan, and while he made a couple questionable decisions this year, seemingly being annoyed at a few cats in clan, he still seems to be doing pretty good in general. <laughs> and Bay Timber is still deputy in Viper Clan, and I'm really rooting for a Bay Star. She's a, such a sweetheart, and maybe she can make Viper Clan less aggressive. <laughs> Medicine Cat-wise, Galaxy Clan no longer has Beetle Bite, but oh boy, Moss Clan. So their previous medicine cat, Elmshade, died in the fire along with an apprentice that she had been training, the childish Brookpaw who I didn't draw. Luckily, Moss Clan wasn't left without a medicine cat because before that, a childish loner named Valley had joined, becoming one. But Moss Clan is once again down to one medicine cat who is an older guy still. So hoping he gets some help soon? They're really not doing good. In J-Clan, Algae Heart retired, so she's still around but no longer a medicine cat, leaving Garlic Spirit as the head med cat now. Garlic Spirit also has the one kit that the clan has in general right now, so the kit is a bit spoiled. And I also completely forgot to mention Rat Splinter last year, but he's wise and still pretty young. I love him. I'm so sorry I forgot to say anything about you. Um, I think he's really good buds of Snake Eye. And as for Viper Clan, Grey Egg also retired with her mate. So she's still around, and with the remaining medcats, we have Burrow Dusk and Porschfield, who actually became mates. Both of these two are on the older side again, so I'm hoping that they get an apprentice soon. I'm always on the lookout for possibilities that could be happening with the medicine cats, because having none is always such a scary thought to have. But I'm also adding a mediator section, because along with Thunder Spirit and Galaxy Clan becoming one, there is currently an active mediator in another clan now. Surprisingly, the wise Ochreforn decided to become one in Viper Clan. And side note, Ochreforn is non-binary and uses they them pronouns. But yeah, I find it extremely interesting that this is the cat who got swiped after a bad negotiation with Hope Fern and Dark Whistle, and then they decided to become a mediator later. Hoping they might be able to smooth some things over in the future so Viper Clan doesn't get into so many wars, but we'll see. But yeah, that's year 16. That was so much death and I'm sad. I actually planned for the Badger animatic to be a bit longer and to make some bonus panels throwing some of the other cats in to show them fighting and give some more personality stuff. But I ended up losing a week of drawing time this month when I didn't have my tablet cord to draw. So I went with cutting a bunch out from my plan, but I still wanted to draw the event in general. We lost a kit, a medicine cat, our deputy, all of our elders, all in one event, and I was not okay. Like I said, I sent my boyfriend screaming crying when I got the notification. I'm so sad to lose Dark Whistle too, but I love that Thunder Spirit stepped up into the role that he left behind since it seems like he's fitting in well. And I'm happy we didn't completely lose the mediator role. And Holostar is a bit more concerning this year with the whole murdering a rogue thing. In general, he seems more stressed for obvious reasons, but I'm hoping for the best with his kits. Again, in general, Holostar seems to be blinded by rage at times and seems to lash out and attack things and people before he thinks. I think he feels really bad that he saw that she had kits afterwards. Side note, should I stop letting Holostar give apprentices their parent as a mentor? I usually changed it, but I haven't really been doing that underneath his rule for some reason, so let me know. Truffle Sprout's an unexpected deputy, but we take that. Freckle Spot's been looking at a lot of cats of malice, and I think she's mad that Snipcloud left. Like, I think she's just kind of throwing a tantrum a bit. And again, Snipcloud joined Viper Clan. And we somehow got two more cats in the Dark Forest this year. Osprey Claw speed ran getting into cat hell for real. Again, might be able to redeem herself, we'll have to see. Overall, very messy year, and I feel- But yeah, that's year 16, thank you guys for watching. I have lots of links below, including the family tree, the playlist, my Discord, Instagram, etc. And my commissions are open if you'd like to support me that way. Galaxy Clan updates on the last Sunday of the month, and we're gonna have a slightly longer wait for the next year, I think, because the last Sunday of next month is the 31st. So yeah, see you guys then, and thank you again for watching. Peace!